advantages of, of dumping uh, plastic in the ocean. And uh, one of the so-called advantages was that it's convenient for large corporations, it's expensive, and uh, some of the disadvantages, obviously, uh, the destruction of food sources and killing of planktons and uh, desalination. And on top of that, uh, plastic also finds its way back to our dinner table. As you can see, once the plastic is dumped in the water, um, it breaks down into plastic microbeads. Uh, and due to UV radiation waves and currents, uh, it gets even smaller and breaks down into uh, plastic nanobeads. Uh, which will be then eaten by crabs, mussels, and planktons, and then goes back into uh, the food web. There has been many tries and, and projects about uh, cleaning up the ocean. Um, one of the main ones was uh, initiated by a 20-year-old Dutch innovator called uh, Boyan Slet, uh, and he invented the uh, plastic cleaning device. It was called the Ocean Cleanup Proje Project. Uh, it received a lot of criticism because uh, it mainly cleans up the surface of the water and it doesn't really go uh, deeper than that. So obviously there's a lot of room for improvement. And uh, we, as I mentioned before, we, we deal with uh, some of the, we deal with some projects and uh, some of our main projects uh, have to do with uh, the environment. And we're currently working on, on four uh, different projects that uh, have to do with uh, thermal cracking. And uh, obviously, Professor Levy is a, a chemist, so uh, the presentation goes that way from now. But uh, <laughs> the, here's the chemistry of uh, polymers in a nutshell. And uh, so as you can see, a polymer molecule is presented uh, schematically which uh, consists out of a large number of repeat units called MERS. Um, the number of MERS found in a polymer chain is scientifically referred to as a degree of polymerization. And such a long chain needs to be broken down into smaller fragments that are useful as fuel, uh, combustible gases, or pure carbon. carbon. Um, the PMMA is a clear polymer which can be processed into an organic glass. Um, so here, as you can see, uh, this is just burning plastic in, in open air, uh, which obviously uh, releases heat and uh, a dense black toxic smoke, which is uh, terrible for the environment. And this is what we're trying to uh, solve through our projects or some of our projects. And uh, this is, here you can see the, the thermal cracking uh, process detail. I'm obviously not a chemical engineer, so I don't want to get into any details on how the process works. But uh, you see the feed hopper. This is where you uh, uh, put the plastic in, and it goes through the machine. And uh, there's the gasification and the steam reformation. And then through the process, uh, at the end, obviously, uh, something different comes out. Um, and here you can see how the actual uh, device would look like. It's, it's a very complicated process to put uh, a device like this together. And here you can see how it works in real life. Once you put the plastic waste in, um, you pretty much get three different uh, products, one of uh, which is uh, diesel oil. You also get uh, combustible gases and uh, carbon powder for, for steel. I don't know, there's a short. Yeah, the video is not gonna work. Anyway, it pretty much just shows how the combustible gas pushed through that, that baggy thing and then how it just pretty much burns. So, as a conclusion, the responsibility of an artist is to warn of a new problem, and the mission of a scientist is to solve the problem. 
And as George Bernard Shaw said before, science never solves a problem without creating 10 more. But uh, this is how science works and, and makes progress. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you for the presentation. And uh, Marco, please stay with us for the next uh, roundtable discussion. Our topic is art and innovation. And I would like to ask the other three participants to join us. Uh, Kata Gereben, and Karina Vissanova, and also Gábor Bordós. We have a first presentation from you, Gabor, I guess. And also from Lina. And from Lina. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. Okay, but before we start with Gabor, uh, just to get all of us a bit more inspired. We have a presentation from uh, Lina Klaus. She was also an artist in this artist in residency program. Now she cannot be here. She will arrive uh, next week, at the end of next week, and she will lead some workshops as well, so everyone have the opportunity to met, meet her uh, in person, and uh, I hope the sound. Okay, but if not, I don't know whether we. our artist in residence, Lina Klaus. Uh, she's living in Bali. And as I told you before, uh, she does really great uh, participatory art um, in the public space. Um, lots of um, crazy ideas. Um, for instance, what you see in the back of her video are used um, flip-flops uh, they found on the beaches. And these are just flip-flops. Um, and they, they um, wanted to specify on that because at the, uh, when you're far away, you just see this rainbow installation and the closer you get, then you think, okay, these are shoes. But if you come more closer, um, then you say, actually, these are all old shoes. <laughs> and this is a bit um, how she raises awareness and it's unbelievable, but she had such a great media coverage as well. So not only um, uh, the Rolling Stone magazine, or, um, uh, the Guardian and so on, everyone was really uh, pleased with her installation. This is what we would like to encourage artists, right? So that they really come up with crazy ideas to get us all <laughs> on board to fight for our good water quality. We can see what she has done. <laughs> and this was just a greeting uh, from Bali this morning. Okay. So uh, now I would like to give the word to you, Gabor, to do your presentation. And I stop Lina.
Okay, thank you very much. Um, I hope you don't mind if I stand up. I like presentation better than uh, when I'm standing and, and not sitting. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us and uh, it's very good that uh, I'm not the first speaker who is not an artist because uh, <laughs> we heard already a, a presentation from the scientific point of view. Um, in my opinion, what we've, we've heard in, uh, in this morning that, that uh, you would like to raise attention through your, through your uh, art. And um, now I would like to show that, that also there's a possibility in science to, to raise attention. But maybe it will be the last part of my presentation. Um, and first I would like to talk about um, a very tiny part of, uh, of this global problem. This is, this is the so-called microplastics. How, how does it start? Um, maybe we don't, re we don't realize that, that uh, we are surrounded by plastics everywhere in our life. We, we get up with plastics, go to bed with plastics, even if we don't recognize it, it every time. We, we take our toothbrush and, and use it in the morning. 